What next to the groove is one of the most important things? The bassline. Funky, punchy synth basslines. I guess that that's today's video. You ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Hey yo, what's up? I'm in Low Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you not miss out on anything. Hang around till the end of this video, I'll tell you all about how ADE went, I'll tell you all about the Kitchen Club and I'll tell you all about how you can get in line to hang out with us in Patreon and in the Discord chat. Yes, it is another baseline video. The baseline to me is a very important thing. Not only is it melodic, it's also percussive. In my opinion, a funky bassline is the one that is on and around the beat measure. And the beat measure is the one, two, three, four. With funk music or with other types of music, usually if the bass one goes boom, cha, boom, 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 cha, the bass will play doom, 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 doom. To do. That's already funky in itself. When you're talking about a funky bass line means it gives the groove a little help. It pushes the groove forward. In a sense, when you're working with sequence based four to the floor type grooves, it would mean that the bass line is even more important because that is where most of your groove is going to come from. Now with a one, two, three, four, it means that if you stick a bass line on top of it, you need to do some sound design to make those two very bottom heavy frequencies work. Notes that shift on and from the beat measure can help to play a funky bass line. Now there's three different ways of looking at the bass line. You've got bass lines that start before the measure, you've got bass lines that start on the measure, and then there's bass lines that start after the measure. Now in that one, two, three, four, in one bar, in the sequence, you've got the first portion of the bar and the second portion of the bar. It's very important to understand how that works. I will give you a few examples of beats and bass lines that do something really different due to copyright on YouTube. I don't want to get flagged, so obviously I'm going to just link all those tracks in the segment below so you can find out and listen to those tracks. You might even pause and look at the links that I've got below with all the tracks that I'm going to talk about right now. To speed up the groove, repetitiveness is one of the tricks that you can use to have your groove go forward. One such groove has to be Carl Craig's throw record. If you remember that, it's just constantly that hamster wheel that plays the bass on all over again. It doesn't extend to the full four beats of the measure. It starts at one, two, and at three, four, the same thing repeats itself. Starting for the measure, Michael Jackson's wannabe starting something. That's a very iconic bass line that drives the whole groove forth. Very uh, drum driven bass line. I would say that a drummer would probably just come up with a sort of groove like that, but now being played by the bass player gives this track a different kind of flavor. A track that starts on the measure but drifts away from the measure is Chicane's Bruce Water. It starts on the one, but then it does something else. As further on, you get into the four beat groove, and that's something that also helps this track forward. A very progressive -y, say melodic techno type approach to that kind of bass line. And then there's another approach where you extend the listener's attention to not even listen to a one bar, but a two bar sequence. So instead of one, two, three, four, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then repeats Cass James' footprints. When you listen to the track, the groove and the sped up part is in the congas and in the percussion. And then when the bass line comes in, it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then it starts again. It's a very cool track. Go check out those tracks. I'll take you to my live set and let's see on where you can get that groove to go. See if we can twist it, record some stuff into the MPC, and let's see if we can come up with a funky bass line that contains much of what I just told you. Let's even make a combination of that. What it's going to be, I don't know. But let's go and do it and check it out. You ready? Let's go! Right, gang. Okay, now this is how we're going to do this today. Um, we've got the setup already exploded again once more, but that's how it goes, right? That's how it goes. I mean, that was to be expected. Now, I've got the sub sequence 37 sitting over here. That's the main synthesizer on which I'm going to do the video today. There's a lot of stuff that's already playing, all the stuff, but 
we're not so much going to get into that. We're just going to look at okay, funky bass lines. Right, I have got the multi clock sitting right here, on which I have got the MPC one playing, and I've got the um, octatrack track playing. I've, I've disconnected them from each other. There's a Tenton black box and then there's a MIDI fighter. Those things are not doing anything as of the day. Um, uh, we're not just going to get into that. There's a mini tar sitting over here. There's a blue sky, although it's black. Hmm. Then there's a digital delay. My blue sky was broken, so I've got one on loan. This is a different one. Then there's a DM12 mixer right here. The OB6 is here. The Acid Box 3. Um, the stuff that's coming out of the Akai uh, MPC1 is going straight into the Acid Box 3. Acid Box 3 goes onto the mixer. That's pretty much how it goes. Now, um, I've got my drums sitting on channel 2. That's the Akai sitting on channel 1. Um, and then I've got different tracks of the. Um, subsequent sitting right there so we can do whatever we want. Now let me just quickly go over the drums that I have. Pretty much the BPM today is looking at the clock 122. I'll play the drums here. Now what's going on quick fast uh, to go over the drums. I've got a little bit of an atmosphere on the impact which is what I thought was going to be very important because you want something to um, extend the listener's attention. So what I've done, I've stuck that on uh, track uh, seven, and that's going on half the tempo. You can see the boom, 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 boom. There it is again. So that's on one fourth. So it means that it's only going to come in every 16 bars, um, which is cool. Because if you look at this, one, two, three, and repeat, two, three. There's the kick drum. Now there's a few things that I'm playing. Um, for this groove to work, I always have to think on do I need something from my drums immediately before I get to my bass line, and I do because I want my I want the beat to do something else. So let's take everything out. Just a basic kick. It's got a bit of a of a pulsating thing going. Whoa, 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 as you can hear, track two is a loop of some sort. I slice that loop up. So if I go to slices here. The jumps about so also I've got 64 steps on that and I can do different things because there's different slides here so there's so later on in the track I can even think to just like do different stuff with the high-end frequency for now I just have it placed on a 16th and there's a little bit of noise at the end of it so at the end of the, that small segment so that works. I'll go out of slice uh, mode and go back to quick mute mode so I can have this whole thing being in my performance mode so all the tracks here correspond to the different tracks that I've got sitting over here. Now, a short um, morph between what is a finger snap, a clap or a snare, so it's a bit muffled. Yeah. Oh, and then obviously there's my small... Uh, You know, so burn the incense. Let's get into it. Right, so then track four is a tom. Now I want the kick drum to do a bit of a uh, breakbeat kind of groove already. Um, so I've tuned an 808 tom low into the same pitch as the rest of the track, and it's, uh, as, as in here as well. So there you go, you know? So I've got the boom. Okay, now. So this, this in itself is already um, getting you into an infinite loop. The infinite loop is very important when it comes to uh, to dance music. Now I told you about the groove other, uh, being other than a 4-4 uh, beat on the floor. That's obviously going to do completely different things and it's easy for your bass line to play. So if you've got the bam, 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 bam constantly in your face, it means you have to come up with some, some funky bass lines. So what else have I got? I've got uh, track 5, which is a snare drum that I've got mapped to uh, uh, the B side of the scene that I've got scene A and scene B I've mapped it there, but if I hit scene B, then there's another thing that I have, which is not playing right now, 6, that's a closed, well it's an open hat actually, but I've got the release, so if I open it up the, the higher it becomes longer, 
and I've got delay on there so I can play play around with some some sort of a atmosphere, you know? Go back in. And track seven is that effect that you hear every other uh, bar. So that's how the drums are set up. Now, um, then if I play this, I'll go. Now the Akai is already running, right? that everything is running in time yeah so if this is on a 16th you don't want to start this on a 12 or an 11 or whatever so i know that everything is going in the right direction i've got some sort of an atmosphere in the background already that's coming from the black box everything is very mild and moderate i don't really have a lot of in your face kind of stuff but i would like to build up this groove a little bit more now I was talking to you, turn this off, about how these bass lines work. A part of it is sound design as well, so if I'm listening to this bass, there's a lot of reso on there. And what I need is, I need it a little bit to be a little bit more. So I'll need to, to be a little shorter. And what I told you about things on the measure, you know, so if you're listening to that Michael Jackson bass line, it always starts before the groove. So it gives that... Like I said, it's more of a drummer type bass line that does something, uh, a drummer type, type sequence that works like that. So, so if I was to think on how does this work for me, can I maybe uh, instead of um, think up a bad bass line, can I alter the bass line that, 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 that was played on that record and play something else with it, maybe? just those grooves might be a bit hard. Now what I've done, the Minitar plays straight up 16s, but I have recorded what I did with the filter on the MPC. So now there's a sequence already starting as well. So let's check out what that is. Let's see. And there you go again. So this one machine does two things. It plays like ticket, 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 and the rest a little bit so that you get another drum but bam 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 to the cup but down bam 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 to down bam 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 so this let it sink in for a while but the trick is that this is now going to just like be embedded on the groove the longer you listen to it i will mix it a little bit so put it uh, take it out a little so i'll probably stick it like underneath the thumb here the length. Because it's automated, as soon as I let it go, it's going to start back to where it is. So that's cool, right? So you can just now do something and have that do something for itself. So that's another groove right there. So Another trick that I do, so I record something there, and if I want to not have that play i'll just go to a different sequence on the mpc where there's no automation then i can alter and be a little bit more free with what i want to do but this is going to be the alternative groove or funky bass line within this groove and now if i play here You 
note that certain notes are going to start to play around with each other. Certain frequencies are hitting each other, other frequencies not so much. So there's a lot of opening and, and open space within that sixth. Now I use two different bass lines um, next to each other. People are always asking me, are you not afraid that it's going to clash with the frequencies? Not so much because this thing is a set it, forget it kind of vibe. You just like freak around with the levels until you think like, okay, that's done. The OB6 is playing some sort of an arpeggio that I've already programmed on there that's doing this. And again, transients of this synthesizer are going to eat away at the minitar as well. So the more you fill in that sonic palette on your uh, in the in the frequency spectrum. The less you're going to really notice these type of things because they're like hi hiding in plain sight, if you will. Now, okay, I'll play the Michael Jackson bass line. Funky, right? That's already so. If I was to play a bass line for myself, I can go maybe. change. I've got something that people uh, perceive as, as something being hmm, recognizable, but at the same time, it's like, whoa, it's not the same thing, right? So this is one approach. I'm going to take out a bit of the filter on the OB6, go even softer with this a small modulated LFO type baseline on the minitar. Now, Bruce Water, GK. on the one but it drifts away from the measure boom, ba, ba, boom, ba. One, one, one. and when they play the chord it's first Instantly, there's another sort of like vibe that you get. I like to play those existing bass lines on my track if I've got some sort of a basic thing going because then I know how that feels. And if that bass line sits tuck neatly within my track, I know that, whoa, okay, the track is going in a certain direction. Okay, Cass James, another track that's completely doing something else. This time he starts not even on the one, it's way past the mesh of the that measure, two, three, four, you know, and then with Chicane starting on the one. 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 this baseline works because now you can just spread out the track so everything goes in different measures right so that's one thing that plays all the time take it take it take it take it one 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 which is this one 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 take it, take it, take it. so within my groove i'm doing different measures that's another thing one two one two three and that's already on two Three, four, and again, one, two. So this one is on the first, this one is on four. And then if you play that bass line, it's going to be over a span over eight. You get a completely different funky feeling. Five. One, two. That's 
that's completely a different focus. Now, I'm going to take this out for a second. I'm going to take that out as well. Now that I'm in the zone already with what I have played, let's just take everything out. Nice. Cool. Maybe a little bit of this flow. Because I like to hear some sort of a melodic sort of vibe within my track. Let's see if we can... Now, also with bass lines, funky bass lines, if you want to just nail the groove and just stick with it, you play them. You stay on the same route now, right? Because the whole track is in... Uh something on the first of the beat, on the first measure. Let's go back in. Alter my drums. And the safest thing and easy to figure out is just that's that chicane bass line, right? Okay, what I'm going to do is alter that and add a few notes to it. So I'll play like First one, two is the same, and then the second, the three, four is going to be different, right? And then I can juggle this around. Let's just do a walk. hear me talk about how it needs to be percussive, the tracks need the, 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 the. Going to alter the sound a little bit. Let's take this out because it's annoying. Gonna add some noise in there. So you know, then you know if I'm talking about percussive something, um, what I mean. So if I'm playing something. Sometimes it's easier to just come up with something that is percussive and just like add notes to it rather than try to just do it the other way around. At least that's how it works for me now. On the beat is... patterns, one before the measure, one on the measure, one after the measure. If you combine all of them, it means that if you are changing your chords around, or you're going in a different direction, you can think of, okay, 
the longevity of the track and the listening attention span is absolutely going to be exciting if you mix those things up. Now, let's see if I can work it out. I'm going to go right, I'm going here, here, and here. Yeah, on the beat. So on the beat. Uh. Uh. On. Uh. Uh. And when you do that, then the first of the measure tells everybody that's where we're going. That's how we're going to just like start. The second one starts for the groove. And then if you change the third one to after the beat, you've got a little bit of an accent in the middle of your groove. So in a four bar sequence, now all of a sudden there's a bit of an accent in the middle of the, of the, of the groove. So starting the first one, see what we do. First one is on the one. This is how I like to just play around. I watch a lot of bass players on how they do it because with synthesizers and with sequences, you record something, it just gets played back. It does the thing all the time, the same. So you have to place as much variety as you can within the track that you are working with. And also mask it around. Because obviously when I've got something like this playing, and I've got something like this playing as well, I got something like this play. Then already the track is already moving, right? I don't really have to worry about. Okay, is it going to get boring at some point? Okay, so same bass line.
so I have to tell you that Amsterdam dance event was amazing. We did the kitchen club. It could have been busier, but there was a million parties going on in Amsterdam. The Amsterdam dance event, for those of you that don't know, it's the world's biggest dance music conference uh, in the world. So everyone's throwing parties. There's conferences during the day. There's so much that you can see. We did our first kitchen club ADE party there. And I would like to say thanks to Unicode. Thanks to Circo for coming out, flying out, and, and, and uh, uh, being on the lineup. Absolutely amazing. Thanks, you guys, ever so much. In that sense, thanks to Robin, thanks to Danny, thanks to Rodder, who drove all the way eight hours in a car from the south of France to come and check out the party. Thanks to Dan B also for being there. Um, uh, Danny and L, obviously. There is a huge community growing around this YouTube channel and I thank you for being part of it. It's amazing. Now, what I wanted when COVID started and I was only on 100 subscribers, I was like, wouldn't it be great if at some point we could just like meet up and play together and just join in with whatever we like and love to do, which is the dollars aspect of making music and talking about gear, talking about whatever, you know what I mean? So it was for me, some, some, some like, something like a, an, an epic uh, moment in time where I really got to meet some of you guys, hang out with some of you guys, and um, the sky is the limit. Um, what is next? Well, we have got a new venue for uh, 2023 locked in already for ADE, because you have to be fast with these things. I'm mean, still even wearing my Pro Pass fan, so, which I'm going to ritually uh, take off after this video, but I wanted to make sure that um, I was still in the ADE vibe to let you guys know about that. So the venue is already done for 2023. Um, you can get on board. Uh, it works through Patreon, which is a support platform. You won't be breaking the bank. It'll be cool. And yes, I am. I finalized my first EP, which is going to be released on Kitchen Club Records. Now the track that you hear that you're probably going to hear after uh, this video, the last track. Uh, that's one track that I did with a subsequent 37, that bass line. There's another track called Monopoly, which I did with a Cork Monopoly, the original one. And all those tracks are going to get released on vinyl. Now I'm going to throw out my samples pretty soon within my Discord um, and Patreon community to do remixes because on the next EPs we're going to like embed remixes from you guys. So it will become, a, it will be released on vinyl. Mind you though, there's going to be an NFT sort of situation involved as well. As you know, vinyl nowadays takes close to seven to eight months before you have a vinyl copy in your hand. So wouldn't it be great that in your NFT, sort of like a wallet, you will have certain things, certain tiers, some access to certain things while you wait for the vinyl. I already would like to tell my community that you guys will be the first to just like get your hands on those vinyls if you want to so um, as soon as the links are up i'm going to just tell you to go and grab it fast um so that's on the vinyl side of things on the ade side of things now uh, in terms of the baseline video today i love my baselines i love to do it um there's different approaches and there's different ways of doing stuff so this can go on like forever um I will do a video on band members soon, so you understand how I see my uh, electronic live set as a band, as an electronic band, an electronic orchestra, and how you place your placeholders left and right. This is something that we can get into so I can get a little bit deeper into the band or bass or drum or whatever, because I think that it's a tight-knit, uh, very close situation on where you need to stick your stuff in order for it to work. Now. Um, I, I think I, I'm there pretty much. Yeah, I'm there. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you are an absolute, absolute superstar. Um, I will catch you next week, you know where, on another video. I'm in the kitchen and I'm out. Peace.